think we were followed. Good. Hey, yo, you get bit? No. Nah, bro. I, I see the bite. No. Bro, you're literally turning into a zombie. Y yes. No. Yes. No. You're turning into a zombie. <laughs> that was a B. No, it's not. I'm gonna check my phone. I think the piano's kind of under tune. Bro, you literally just slid up. No, no, I didn't. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Eyes. I hope you enjoyed that very bizarre skit we put together for this video. With that aside, the first thing we have to do is isolate the pupil. We'll start by adding the delta key. Using the eyedropper, try to find a selection that works reasonably well to separate the iris from the whites of the eyes and skin. This is going to be a bit different for every subject and shot. Then, in the matte section, use the threshold handles to pull in a tighter selection. The clean background and clean foreground sliders can also be used to do this. Shift space to add a new node, then add the surface tracker. Move it to a new output and put it in the left window. Zoom in and draw a rough mask around the iris. When you're done, click on the mesh settings. It should automatically generate a mesh. You shouldn't really have to tweak any of these settings, just move any points to the tracker that could cause problems. Reflections, for example. Now we get to track the mask. After it's done, scrub through your footage. When the subject blinks, the track gets kinda lost. Though it's annoying, it's not a big deal. If you hold control down and draw a shape, you can stretch and transform multiple points at once. Then track one frame forward until the eye is closed. Keep adjusting it until the eye is all the way open again. Now, because of the key, you might not have to change the mask for the blink. Just line the mask back up after. Once everything is in the clear, track the mask forward. However, if your subject has darker skin, the key might only separate the whites of the eyes from the iris, but not the eyelids. If that's the case, do what I did here and go through animating the mask to avoid intersecting the eyelid. In the result tab under output, change it to create mesh alpha mask. Expand the mask slightly and increase the softness. Then repeat all of that in a new surface tracker for the next eye. Now we have these two separate masks and we need to combine them into a single layer. Drag in the merge node, plug one into foreground and the other into background. In the apply slash blending mode drop down, change it to screen. Pretty easy. Now we get to finally use these. Another merge node. Put it right after the delta key, then plug the mask into the merge node. Then change the operator to mask, but it doesn't work. This is because the surface trackers aren't putting out an actual alpha channel, just a luminance disguised as an alpha channel. And really, that's quite rude, but not a big deal. Add a channel booleans node. If you're used to After Effects, this is just the shift channels equivalent. Under the two alpha dropdown, select luminance. This will make completely black areas have an alpha value of zero, all the way up to completely white with a value of 100, shifting the luminance channel to the alpha. Then, if you want to be neat, select everything and control G. Technically, this whole group can be replaced with a simple mask, but doing it this way is much more enjoyable, and I like the freedom plus the features that Delta Gear gives me. Now add, you might have guessed it, another merge node. Take the group and plug it into the foreground. It looks weird though. This is because the Delta Gear is doing some spill suppression and altering the color. To fix this, go into the Delta Gear's matte selection and change the replace mode to source. Now any differences should be negligible. Next, add a color correct node. Here's where the fun really starts. You can begin toying with the settings. There are a lot of cool looks that you can come up with. You'll notice some settings might seem to affect the whole image. If this happens to you, go to options and check pre-divide slash post multiply. That's all you have to do. I don't know why that's not checked by default, and I don't know why more people don't say this, but now you don't have to ask Quora. Then you just pull the settings around till you get what you want. These are the settings I finished with. By blurring and eroding the key, you can create a few different looks. I decided I wanted to keep the dark ring around the eyes. If you wanted to, you could create some cataracts using this. The only other effect I added to this was a sharpen note. It gave it a bit more depth and for some reason created a slight yellowing around the iris. Control G, then F2 to rename. One other thing to note is that you can mess around with blending modes. I highly suggest you just fiddle around and see what looks you can come up with. And now you have to mask out the whole eye. I'm going to use the magic mask because it's so much quicker, but just like the eye masking group, you can do this manually. So after drawing an oval in each of the eyes, I cleaned up any extra bits I don't want, and then I tracked it. When you're done, definitely give it a healthy amount of blur, and you can expand it out a little bit too. 
move it up out of the way and into a new output. Pull over the second window and add another color corrector. Make sure you're viewing that, then go ahead and increase the contrast and saturation. Don't spend too much time on this, we'll dial that in later. Add a sharpen edges to make the veins pop, then a blur to counteract the excessive sharpening and making it blend back in with the original. This should be set to something pretty low like 0.3 or 4. Now drag another merge node before the media out and plug that chain of effects into the foreground. If your whole clip darkens, go back into the color corrector and check that pre-divide slash post multiply box again. Now back in the correction section, start having fun and come up with the look that you want. If you want, here are my settings, but they will probably change on different footage even for the same look. Now we're going to fiddle with the sharpen edges node. If you check display edges, you can see exactly what's being sharpened. I'm not going to go into much depth here because it's mostly just pulling things around until it looks good. When you're done, Control g to group and F2 to rename. And if all you're concerned about is the eyes, you're done, but I'll cover skin too. You can do this just the same in Fusion, but because we were also doing color grading on the footage, it made more sense to do it in the color tab alongside skin tones. Adding in a new serial node or parallel node, then using the magic mask to pick out the skin and exclude the hair, letting some slip through is totally fine, it does not have to be perfect. Track it, then drop the saturation and increase the contrast to your desired look. Pretty simple, and again you can technically do this with just a regular mask. Bonus round! Effects that you could use to enhance your look, but I didn't because I didn't. Up first we have Drop Shadow. Turn the drop distance all the way down and you could use this to darken the pits around the eyes to get a more sunken look or even give your zombie eyeliner. Second runner up we have Emboss. Make sure to switch the style to Emboss Over. It's kind of like Sharpen but with light direction, it casts shadows and creates highlights using the detail based on the light direction and power. Last and definitely most difficult to actually use is Dent. Scaling and moving it to the pupil that you would have to actually track Increasing the strength, but not too much, or you totally break it. <clears throat> you can control the size of the pupil, dilating the eyes for a dramatic effect. You totally do a touch angle. If you care, there are some time lapses of the makeup and other behind the scenes crap up on the new second channel, Datum X. Some other stuff that we are working on because we are working on things. There's a CG short that I've been working on for like a how many months now? A lot of months. <laughs> there will be tutorials on that too. Um, yeah. What are the other stuff they're working on? Oh yeah, we want to set up a Fiverr account. You just bumped the camera, it's fine though. A new short film, several short films. <laughs> Things are crazy. You sound like a bomb, bro. My name is Miles LaRoche, and my life is a little bit crazy. <laughs> okay, sure. Go check it out if you care. If you don't, then don't. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, like. If you didn't, you can dislike it. See ya. Now add a <coughs> Now back in the correction section, how now back back in the out now back in the correction section. So that's a trip so that's a trip to Quora? Quora? Now any difference now any differences now any differences should be negligible negligible.